Good evening, one and all. It's my great pleasure to introduce one of the eminent speakers of the decade, I could say, because whatever you're seeing in pediatric emergency medicine, it is just because of one, one, one and one madam, that is Dr. Professor Dr. Indumati Santanam. Her current designation is project coordinator and her affiliation now is as regional collaborative center with pediatric resuscitation and emergency medicine simulation laboratory at the Institute of Child Health and Hospital for Children, Madras Medical College. There are many, many major achievements where ma'am has been done. A few of them are, she has been received the K. Krishnaswamy gold medal for best paper in social pediatrics in 1994, best paper for National Congress of Pediatric Critical Care, best paper in Indian Society of Critical Care Medicine at 2000 at Bangalore, presented papers, various papers at Boston, Geneva, Sydney, Cape Town since 1999. And she has written a book on editor and author for pediatric emergency medicine course, which is widely known as PMC course across the world. Since 2008-9, she has been doing this program and also in the International Congress of Emergency Medicine in 2016, she had presented. And she has written her own book on illustrated textbook of pediatrics for undergraduates, which is widely accepted across India and has been looked in for. And she's a contributor for PG textbook in pediatrics 2015, textbook on pediatric emergencies 2015, American Academy of Pediatrics in 2016, pediatric emergency medication book, which is very, very helpful. For those who are listening today, I would recommend that you all have to look into this book for any kind of an help you require in your day-to-day -day practice in emergency medicine, not only emergency, you can also look in for the drugs which is available uh, to be practiced in your day-to-day -day practice. With all these things, I have an extreme uh, looking forward because she is a very good orator and very good teacher and so many students have come out of her and they're doing very well across the world. Over to you, ma'am. Um, thank you, sir. Thank you for the very kind words. I am not very sure I uh, deserve uh, uh, your um, um, your amazing introduction, but uh, thank you for your warm, uh, I mean, uh, uh, invitation. And uh, this has been long awaited. We've been wanting to uh, do this program for a very long time. Uh, I'm glad that uh, today it's been possible. So I just thought I'll take a fairly uh, less known topic in uh, in emergency medicine that is poisoning in children where one pill can kill. We, uh, we think that in, uh, a large amount is what is seen in adults. Intake of a large amount of medications can kill, but in children, unfortunately, even one pill can have life-threatening consequences. And I thought uh, today is a good day to illustrate that point. So uh, children ingest tablets out of curiosity. They have no idea. It's attractive. It's in a blister pack. And they may just, in an explorative uh, manner, up to the age of five, six, they uh, they try to take these things. And um, uh, early recognition, resuscitation, decontamination, and antidote, if possible, is, is essential for optimal outcomes. So um, there are a list of common poisons, but I've taken what was, is more common in the Indian context, the calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, clonidine, sulfonyl ureas, and chlor uh, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. So these are the few medications that I've taken into account. So it's important that uh, the first responder in the emergency establishes physiological status, finds out what is happening to the child, resuscitate for life threats, and make sure you document your findings. Plan gastric decontamination or activated charcoal or, or uh, whole bowel irrigation, and uh, provide the antidote if available for that particular toxin. So this is a, these are the broad guidelines for any kind of toxin. So uh, when a child is critically ill, Address the patient, not the poison. Address the airway instability, the respiratory arrest. Most of them are bradycardic, hypotensive, often presenting in, in cardiac arrest. And they're convulsing or posturing. Uh, their weight, record. don't forget to weigh, uh, record their weight, their temperature, their CBG, and the ECG. Check for toxidromes. The ECG often can provide you good information. And um, as you do these life-threatening interventions, you also have to focus on decontamination and providing the appropriate antidote. So here is a picture of a child who is uh, being resuscitated. Remember, irrespective of toxin, the uh, resuscitation takes priority. So um, 
you can see this picture shows the uh, airway being secured, the chest compression in progress, the assessment, and the concurrent documentation. These are far, these are really dangerous situations, and the doctor should not get into trouble. So documentation is of absolute importance. Now, uh, suspecting poisoning is a problem because children can't express their uh, thing, and it's uh, uh, so. What we uh, uh, have seen is if you have acute symptoms, that is, a child is acutely become unconscious or convulsing, and there's been no prodrome, there's no diarrhea, vomiting, fever, um, uh, an obvious trauma, or uh, an allergen, etc. There's no explanation, but the child has become suddenly a drop in mental status, has developed uh, cardiac dysfunction. And um, this child was found near some tablets or uh, near uh, uh, some place where access to medication is, 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 uh, is available, uh, then suspect. And if these are toddlers. Toddlers, of course, have no clue as to what they are consuming. And adolescents, of course, uh, you have to suspect uh, suicidal intent. Any unusual odor, symptoms that do not fit a common pattern, and uh, certain poisons can even mimic common diseases. So we have to do a risk assessment. The age is very important because the younger the child, the more likely the toxin has uh, reached life um, uh, uh, uh concentrations. Approximate time of ingestion, if it has not been ingest, uh, witnessed. The nature, whether it is a tablet or a syrup and the quantity. And whether this has been an accidental. 99% in children is accidental, fortunately. Suicidal, we have seen in adolescents. Homicidal, uh, very rare. Uh, and medication overdose, we don't really encounter in, uh, in children because uh, our experience is within 12 years of age. So estimation of quantity, this is important. Always presume the worst case scenario. Consider that all missing tablets have been ingested. Don't say that somebody or some elderly person has taken those tablets and maybe this child has taken one or two. It's not like that. All missing tablets should be presumed to have been ingested or all missing volume, including the spillage, was consumed. And if more than one child has ingested, assume that all children have assumed, consumed all the missing drugs. This will help us to be more uh, aggressive in our resuscitation uh, and uh, take the appropriate steps. Now, um, some of the few uh, um, uh, decontaminating agents are the activated charcoal. Uh, this, as, the, uh, as emergency medicine postgraduates, I'm sure you're aware, is a network of interconnecting pores with, which bind or absorb trap chemicals within minutes of contact thereby preventing their systemic absorption and toxicity. Currently, the Tamil Nadu government has made mandatory that every hospital stock activated charcoal, and this should be the first thing that you give in uh, patients presenting with uh, tablet poisoning. Now, uh, it should be given, You, it's, it's usually useful only within the first one hour of ingestion, and the dose for children is very simple, one gram, 0.5 to one gram per kg, max is about 10 to 25 grams. This can be mixed as a slurry in uh, some soft drink, uh, ideally, uh, it should be covered so that the child is not aware that uh, he's taking this because it's a very unsightly, not a very uh, good looking uh, slurry and uh, should be encouraged to consume it. Now, whole bone irrigation is usually reserved for iron tablets and sustained release tablets. It's um, the peg leg, that is polyethylene glycol electrolyte solution. It's like a, a powder and you mix it. Uh, this is given at 30 ml per kg per hour. The doses are to be seen at, at the point of uh, giving. Please check the doses. And um, this, uh, um, uh, uh, this, these two are the general uh, uh, decontaminating agents that you should have available in your emergency department. The, unfortunately, the antidotes are very few. For paracetamol is MS, telcysteine, iron, desferoxamin, and benzodiazepines, beta blockers, glucagon, calcium channel blockers, IV calcium, Opioid is naloxone, warfarin, vitamin K, and I, uh, INH redoxone, and dapsone is IV methylene blue. Other drugs don't really have, they're mostly supportive management. We don't have specific antidotes. So let's go through calcium channel blocker. These are widely used as um, antihypertensive and antiarrhythmic agents. So the cardiac drugs are uh, verapamil and dilgazim. Uh, vasculature drugs are the infinity. It can, uh, Whichever drug you're using, whichever calcium channel blocker can cause significant hypotension and bradycardia. So um, it's important that uh, you consider when you have a child with cardiac arrest, calcium channel blocker is one such uh, drug which you should, if you don't find fever, no diarrhea, vomiting, and a sudden uh, imminent arrest situation, please consider the possibility the child might have taken a calcium channel blocker. 
and uh, the CBG might show you hyperglycemia. So the um, uh, management is if they reach on time, uh, activated charcoal. However, um, uh, 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 the um, uh, 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 these children concentrate on also stabilizing the airway and breathing. Give large, I mean, uh, small volume aliquots of crystalloids. Norepi or epinephrine high dose will be needed to stabilize the blood pressure. And the antidote of choice here is calcium gluconate. The dose is 0.2 to 0.5 ml per kg as a bolus. And uh, a large, if needed, we may have to give high dose insulin dextrose uh, infusion uh, uh, as a powerful uh, inotrope to support the heart. I have no, uh, uh, lipid emulsion is mentioned, but I have no experience in uh, using this particular modality. Now, beta blockers, um, again, are well known for their antihypertensive and antiarrhythmic agents, they're class two antiarrhythmic agents. They depress the myocardium, they de decrease automaticity and decrease conduct conduction across AV node. Again, these, this drug also presents with imminent arrest, the bradycardia and hypotension, um, and because uh, propranolol can cross the blood brain barrier, can cause uh, uh, significant coma and uh, seizure activity. They can also present with hypoglycemia. So, um, if you see, uh, the, there is a prolongation of PR, a PR uh, interval. Also, if it is propranolol, it may get wide uh, QRS complexes, uh, and the CBG might, uh, might show you hypoglycemia. You have to monitor the uh, CBG um, uh, at serial intervals to to see whether these children can go into, uh, are going into hypoglycemia. Now, um, again here, activated charcoal, I have mentioned it, but it's not, does not play a big role. As I mentioned, these are all small tablets and uh, may not have a big role. Gastric lavage, unless they've taken large quantity. Again, the Bagwell mask ventilation, intubation, the crystalloids, epinephrine high dose, these are all the um, interventions for these uh, children and um, might have to use uh, calcium infusion if, uh, if, um, uh, if uh, for refract, I mean, the, uh, uh, for these children. QRS widening, if noted, suggests the presence of that the child might have taken uh, propranolol and soda bicarb may be used. And seizure activity, standard protocol for status epilepticus. So glucagon has been tried in bolus if the hypoglycemia is refractory. Now, sulfonylureas are anti-diabetic drugs. They present with neuroglycopenic um, um, uh, uh, symptoms. What we have found is coma with uh, seizure activity unexplained, and then we find significant uh, hypoglycemia. We suspect sulfonylureas. So again, and, uh, activated charcoal if they reach us on time. Um, but gastric lavage, is not really recommended. We do it again if the child has reached us within an hour. So uh, the overall management remains the same. The airway and breathing intubation, the ventilation, the crystalloids, high dose epinephrine infusion. The antidote again here is dextrose followed by an infusion. And if it's not responding, we try at octreotide. So um, Chloroquine, We've, we saw many uh, cardiac arrests uh, reported during COVID. The hydroxychloroquine uh, is an anti-malarial, uh, uh, anti-inflammatory drug. It inhibits the uh, cardiac and sodium potassium channels. Again, they present with significant cardiac arrest. So suspect it, uh, it's very, very uh, difficult to treat because we don't have any specific antidotes. They have a lot of arrhythmias. They, have, they present with hypoglycemia. Again, here it is... Um, um, if possible, activated charcoal, the same uh, intubation, ventilation, small aliquots of fluid and high epinephrine doses. And um, antidotes, again, soda bicarb have been used if QRS prolongation is noted, and uh, potassium is monitored in these uh, children. But again, uh, I have to mention that uh, these are not very refractory to management, uh, uh, but there's one rule in uh, toxin ingestion and when they present in cardiac arrest, we continue our uh, CPR for a very long time, hoping that we can um, sort of, uh, these effects of these drugs are about four to six hours. So we uh, have continued uh, trying to give them a chance and we have, there have been uh, occasional cases which have, uh, uh, which have been revived. Clonidine um, earlier was an antihypertensive, today used extensively for ADHD and Tourette syndrome. These are, uh, uh, 
I mean, the, the uh, neurology department uh, has, has started using it. So we do find some uh, episodes, I mean, some uh, occasions when uh, children have been brought with clonidine toxicity. It's a centrally acting alpha uh, sympathetic alpha-2 receptor agonist. It uh, sort of reduces the sympathetic outflow. It also has a kind of opioid uh, effect because it, uh, uh, the child again presents unresponsive. Here again, imminent arrest. And the dose is very minute, 10 to 20 micrograms per kg can cause cardiac arrest or coma. So um, these children again are prone for hypoglycemia and a lot of arrhythmias on the ECG. So um, uh, again, it's the same activated charcoal, the uh, stabilization with the airway breathing circulation and the high dose epinephrine. For bradycardia, we use uh, atropine and because of the opioid effect, uh, we, found for, we find that naloxone also uh, seems to be a fairly useful drug in reverting the, uh, um, the uh, CNS. Now I've just added a bit on oral parastamol because most, uh, not because it's one pill can kill, but because it's, an, it's a, um, a super therapeutic doses of oral parastamol can cause uh, toxic effects of more than 200 milligram per kg as an acute ingestion. The um, management is evaluate serum parastamol less than and by four hours, we should have got the parastamol levels monitor LFT, RFT, and coagulation profile. And if, uh, as per the nomogram, it's increased, then we'll have to give uh, uh, the uh, standard protocol of NSL cysteine of uh, infusing 150 milligram per kg for one hour, and then uh, loading dose, and then followed by the uh, um, uh, 50 milligram per kg over four hours and 100 milligram per kg over 16 hours. So um, these are usually, uh, these uh, acute toxic uh, effects of parasmol we see in the older age group where they take it in terms of um, they are brought with uh, uh, suicidal attempts. I mean, we, see we don't really see much uh, in children. Uh, occasionally they land in liver cell failure uh, for uh, overzealous parents who have uh, given uh, larger doses of parasmol. So here's the nomogram and uh, if uh, uh, please remember that uh, the uh, parastamol, either liquid or oral preparation, tablet preparations can uh, quickly, within half an hour, uh, uh, reach uh, fairly high levels. And um, we need to chart this uh, uh, nomogram uh, almost immediately. As soon as they come, you have to take serum parastamol and check whether the, the, uh, they are above this uh, particular line. Now, we have defined the kind of protocol for uh, children now with uh, parastamol toxicity. Uh, for our um, uh, uh, for the national health mission, uh, as per this protocol, if you take a single acute massive dose and arrive within one hour, activated charcoal is given. Within one to eight hours, activated charcoal is not very useful. So we check the parasmol level and uh, plot the parasmol uh, on the uh, nomogram. Um, if it is below that level, no treatment is required. If it is above, we start the NSL system. Arrival beyond eight hours. Then the NSL system is started irrespective of what status the child, I mean, what the serum parasmol is telling us. Uh, the um, uh, super therapeutic doses, um, you will have to measure again serum parasmol levels and liver enzymes. Um, and again, based on the uh, levels and liver enzymes, we decide whether treatment is needed or not needed. So, um, uh, but we need, we have started a huge program in, uh, uh, in sensitizing parents on how to prevent, uh, uh, teach them how parasmol is given and not uh, use uh, spoons, uh, how much, and uh, uh, tell them specifically the intervals, etc. There's a lot of uh, IEC going on, uh, a lot of educational programs are going on in how to avoid uh, a potential parasmol toxicity. So, um, uh, although rare, uh, not as common as other medical emergencies, uh, I, I hope uh, that uh, this short brief uh, presentation uh, has highlighted the importance of, uh, of uh, medications, which in uh, adults may, may need a large amount, but in children, just one, one tablet or one teaspoon can actually kill. So it's very important that, uh, uh, again, our IEC uh, uh, educational activity has, uh, we are starting telling our parents and teaching uh, the public to safeguard their medications and not to have it accessible uh, for, for young children to explore and to consume and to discard all uh, blister packs, et cetera, in a place where children do not have access. 
So uh, before I uh, stop, I want to thank uh, Dr. Uh, Srinath Kumar, Dr. Saravanan, uh, Dr. Nimla Reddy, uh, Dr. Imran, and all the uh, our, uh, um, our comrades in adult emergency medicine. It's been a pleasure to work with them. And I uh, really feel honored that they have invited me to participate in this very prestigious event. Thank you. Eye opener for all residents who have participated in this particular uh, webinar, and they can do it later on as if they are busy with their uh, work. It's been I have on Facebook also so that they can uh, share the link. So. If the participants have any questions, you may use the chat box or uh, the QA section is also open. If you would rather speak, you may raise your hand. We will allow you to speak. So the pills which are being taken by adults can also be consumed by the pediatrics uh, children because children doesn't uh, know what tablets is been kept or sometimes it may be colorful to take like what they so I said about the paracetamol poisoning which is very very common in the emergency departments so when the patient comes as an emergency physician you have to be ready with your all the gadgets and also ready to be plotting the graph and start the medications on time and the way you have narrated it, it is very, very useful for all the residents who are being present and for also uh, further use of this particular slides. I think there is a question, ma'am. Yes. Uh, IV fluid administration in calcium gluconate. It's a small volume shock. You just have to give five to 10 minutes. It's a, a primary cardiogenic, I mean, it's a myocardial depression. So we need to give some amount of fluids, not, not the 20 ml per kg as recommended by the PALS, but very small aliquots. You have to test and see. We, what we do is we give, uh, um, uh, because this is not a child which has lost fluid, it's, it's depressed the heart. So we give very small aliquots and uh, assess to find out whether the child is improved or not. But our import, the important fact is our uh, inotropes play a big role in, uh, uh, a bigger role than fluid administration and calcium glutamate uh, poisoning. Uh, there's one more question. Are antihypertensives clindipine and amlodipine contraindicated in pregnancy? If yes, why? Let me see that question. Uh, I have no idea what is uh, pregnancy. No, I, I have no, I'm not a magician, so I have no idea about. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. Will, I will. <laughs> Please, we will the question is relevant to the uh, today's discussion, please. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Any other questions? If there are no questions, I'm very thankful, ma'am, on behalf of Society for Emergency Medicine India, on behalf of uh, the uh, Ishada group of hospitals, it, it is a pleasure for me to thanking you for being uh, a member and always being in record that you speak so well and the guidance to all the youngsters is very, very important in the way how they present and how the patient has to be there, taught for. Ma'am, there are two questions. Is there any uh, any specific antidote for camphor poisoning? And one more question is, 1.5-year-old male baby with abnormal jerky movements of body 
He didn't have any previous similar history. I gave lorazepam and later found out to be camphor. Okay, it's the same question. Camphor poisoning. Camphor poisoning doesn't have an antidote. It's the management of uh, status epilepticus uh, okay. because it's a neurotoxic. Uh, 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 it's a neurotoxic toxin. Um, many times we find out that some puja something and the child is brought in with uh, unexplained uh, sudden status epilepticus. We suspect that uh, it is camphor poisoning. We have to give a good uh, uh, here by uh, we have to uh, give a gastric lavage and uh, do the uh, status epilepticus protocol as per standard protocol. Uh, it's quite a rewarding uh, kind of thing because they usually recover quite well. Correct. There is no specific antidote. I mean, to, for that question. anybody is interested, uh, Madam con conducts a lot of uh, pediatric resuscitation in emergency medicine workshops. It has been, uh, re it is available and uh, they can contact ma'am or me, we can organize for them. It's a very, very useful program for the youngsters to look into. And again, I would like to say the medication book, which ma'am has published has been very useful and very uh, sensitive for Indian perspective. You can all uh, look into it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Naveen, I think there are no more questions. We can just...